finally, after countless delays, Rule the Waves 3 is out. Now, you watching this might not be aware of what this game is. Four, the previous games were very niche, and even for someone like me unhealthily obsessed with naval history, I had a hard time finding the franchise. But, in short, it is Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, but actually good. Rule the Waves 3 is a turn-based naval strategy game that allows players to take control of a major naval power during the late 19th and 20th centuries. Players can choose from a variety of starting countries, such as the United Kingdom, Germany, the United States, Japan, and more. The game allows you to manage the navy, including ship design and construction, fleet organization, and strategic decision making. Now, before we go on, it's important to note something. Unless you have this video open in another tab or something, you may have noticed that the graphics are similar to my family's view of me. Underwhelming. A disappointment. A failure. Yet, these graphics are kind of necessary for the deep simulation the game offers, but just in case if you like seeing Big Ship Go Boom instead of reading Big Ship Go Boom, then this might not be the game for you. The primary objective of Rule the Waves is to achieve naval dominance by building a powerful and technologically advanced fleet, and it being effective in battle. When you spawn in, your fleet is AI generated and is likely aggressively mid. You'll likely want to start designing ships right away. You will likely create many types of vessels for many different purposes, but the main ones are battleships, heavy attack and armor, but slow and very expensive. Battle cruisers, like battleships, but you trade out protection for <laughs> heavy cruisers, which are basically the best of the rest. They should be powerful and versatile. Light cruisers are mainly used for AA, escort duties, and light engagements. Destroyers are supposed to be escort ships, but I like to use them to embrace my inner Japanese spirit. This is because they are fast and carry many torpedoes, basically things that go boom underwater, which is very bad for the physical and mental health of a ship. There are also AVs, or seaplane carriers. They are trash. Submarines are stealthy boys that blow up supply ships, which is useful for something I'll talk about in a sec. Finally, there are also aircraft carriers available to you later in the game, which launch and carry aircraft. Now, if you know anything about naval combat IRL, then you'll know that they desperately need a balance update. So you got your nation and your ships, now what? Well, every turn, which is one month, you will likely get an event. This event may give you options that will either decrease or increase tension, budget, and prestige, as well as some other stuff. Tension is a value between 1 to 15, and when it gets to that line, or tension 10, war might be declared. No, that's a lot of tension! It's also have this sort of measurement system, so there might be a war breaking out halfway across the world while you're vibing in peacetime. Also, alliances are a thing. Budget is simply how much money El Presidente has allocated to the navy. If tensions are high, budget will go up. Everything from building ships to building installations to training, ship maintenance, and research all cost money. Also, the budget for your nation is dependent on your natural resources and government. All you need to know about prestige is that if your prestige is low enough, you will be fired, which is game over. The following things affect prestige. So, at some point, your tension gets above 10 for a certain nation, war is declared. When this happens, mobilize your fleet and deploy them wherever you want on the world map. When you click next turn, a battle opportunity will come up. If you click fight, you will be thrown into a battle with what other ships RNG Jesus gave you that day. Unless if it's a fleet battle, both sides will likely be around even. There are many guides for warfare in Rule the Waves 3, and there is way too much going on for me to explain all in this video. So maybe if there's enough attention on this video, I'll make a part 2. Depending on what happens in the battle, you and your opponent will have gained VP points. Pretty much, if you have more VP points than your opponent, you are winning. The more VP points you have, the more land you can take during the peace conference. I was born on a Dublin street. Which means that you will get more natural resources and other stuff, including budget. You can also just straight up invade your enemy's stuff during a war, which, if successful, you just own. You don't need to actually take it in the peace treaty anymore. You can also get these blank provinces via events, which can be based on your country's ideology. How does ideology change? Well, as previously mentioned, if you sink enough supply ships, a nation's people will be very unhappy and overthrow the government, usually to an extremist ideology. This ends the war instantly and prompts a peace deal, but the nation that changed ideology will afterwards probably get a really chonky naval budget because militarization. This can also happen to your country as well. 